how not to run a sales team uh, in the uh, sales movie with Alec Baldwin today. We're going to actually demonstrate for you uh, a lot of things not to do. And we've built a lot of sales teams for some of the most successful coaches in the high ticket space. So we know a thing or two about building sales teams. And today we're going to show you exactly what not to do. Now, if you like this video, make sure to mash that like button so that I know and I can create more content like this. Comment below with any questions or thoughts that you might have. And of course, if you want more content like this, subscribe so you get notified by the little notification bell up in the corner. All right, so let's dive into this uh, Alec Baldwin's uh, speech here from Glenn Gregan Ross. We're just going to dive right into it, and uh, I'll stop it along the way and, and share a few of the things that, uh, that I think are important to kind of point out. Woman in White Plains on the hook. Five units, Mountain View. What happens? She she has to check with a lawyer. You let her check with a lawyer? What do I do? I don't know. Sally. Huh? Who's the guy? Couldn't tell you. I don't like the whole thing, you know, because all I need is a lead. They won't give out. Uh -huh. The rich get richer. That's the law of the land. Who belongs to the BM? It is 7.30. So who is that? So I want to just start, you know, right here with the Ross? mindset of the team. Well, I'm not you a can pretty much so see, I mean, this is a sales team here. Very old school. Uh, this is an old school sales movie. Uh, most uh, people in the sales industry have seen this. And, you know, the, the big joke and the meme you see is coffee is for closers, which we'll see as part of this scene here. Uh, but I just want to talk about the mindset of the team. Because, look, if you've got a team that's in this mindset, I can guarantee you that you're not going to have high performers. It doesn't mean you won't have a high performer on your team, but you're not going to have a team of high performers with this mindset. Um, you've really got, um, you know, an attitude here. Number one, it's more an attitude of like really hardcore making sales and not an attitude of service. And I talk a lot about that in my videos and how, you know, sales is service. And when you start to think of sales as service, you actually uh, are going to come from a much better place that's going to allow you to sell at a much higher rate. Uh, so I just want to speak to that first, that the mindset here of this team is really not the place that you want your team to be. And if you've got a team like this and, and it's really just about, you know, boiler room sort of sales, uh, then, you know, you're going you're gonna to have high turnover, you're going to have high burnout. And, uh, you know, even if you sell a really good product that actually gets uh, people great results, uh, it's still, you know, if this is sort of the attitude towards the people they're selling, then you're going to find that uh, they're not going to be uh, lighting up the world with their, with their sales. So let's keep going. Let me have your attention for a moment. Are you talking about what? You're talking about... Bitching about... Let me have your attention for a moment. Because you're talking about what? You're talking about... Let's talk about something important. Bitching about that sale you shot. Some son of a bitch don't want to buy land. Somebody don't want what you're selling. Some broad you're trying to screw, so forth. Let's talk about something important. Are they all here? All but one. Well, I'm going anyway. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> you think I'm fucking with you? I am not fucking with you. I'm here from downtown. I'm here from Mitch and Murray. And I'm here on a mission of mercy. So I just want to stop here for a second. And this is exactly what I mentioned, alluded to a minute ago. The Your coffee's for closers. This is like the most famous scene from this movie. And in you almost any sales team, you know, you hear this sort of joked about. Uh, now, the, here's the thing. He's responding to a lax attitude, right? Uh, th th this team does have a real lax attitude. And, you know, again, as I said, mindset of the team isn't in a good place. So I get that. It's a really jerky thing to say, right? Coffee is for closers. You don't get, clo you don't get coffee. 
but from for some perspective, I will say that when it comes to spiffs, when it comes to you know uh, bonuses and commissions, when it comes to you know swag, when it comes to other things like. The, the people that have the right attitude, that are go-getters, that you know really care about serving the clients, making you know better sales, to taking care of their administrative work, we do want to incentivize those things. Uh, this is not an attitude of a sales team I would want to be on, uh, and I can tell you that I'm a very successful closer. You know, been a sales trainer now for many years, but. When I have sold on teams, I've always been the number one, uh, and in some cases the number two. And uh, I can tell you, this is not a team that I would want to be on, or that I would survive on, uh, or that I would thrive on in any way. Uh, so, again, I, I get that he's responding to a lax attitude, but it's a pretty jerky thing to say. So let's keep going. You certainly don't, pal. Because the good news is you're fired. Self a salesman, you son of a bitch. I don't gotta listen to this shit. You certainly don't, pal. Because the good news is you're fired. The bad news is you've got all you've got just one week to regain your job, starting with tonight. Starting with tonight's sit. Oh, have I got your attention now? Good. Because we're adding a little something to this month's sales contest. As you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is your... So uh, this is what I call toxic competition, okay? Uh, it's great to have a competitive sure. environment. It's great to incentivize you're your sales team now? to succeed. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's great to have sales contests. Uh, it's really good to, to, you know, get your team working together and working against each other, uh, you know, in a fun way, right? Uh, we want to have a team that, that collaborates, but we also want to have a team that is striving to be the best. Uh, that's, those are all good things for a sales team. Most salespeople are competitive, but this is toxic competition, right? This is really about, hey, you know, first prize is a Cadillac, second prize is steak knives, third prize is, is you're fired, right? I mean, nobody thrives under the, that kind of environment. That's the kind of environment that you're creating on your sales team. Uh, you might find that you have a very successful sales team one month and you might find a really inconsistent sales team the next month because uh, they're just not going to enjoy and you're going to have a high turnover and a lot of burnout. So sales contest, good. Toxic competition, bad. You've got leads. Mitch and Murray pay good money. Get their names to sell them. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close You've got leads. You Mitch and Murray paid good money. Get their names to sell them. You can't close so, the leads look, you're here's given. The thing. You can't leads close do cost shit. Money. You are okay? shit. Hit the and, bricks, pal, uh, and Especially beat if you're in the high ticket space and you've got out. a paid traffic uh, webinar funnel or something, uh, every time you get somebody on the phone, there's a cost to that. And as a salesperson, you need to respect that and recognize that. And that's the reason that you should be reviewing your calls and getting better. And if you're ha having a bad week, an off week, if something's going on in your personal life, you should speak to your sales manager and your team. You know, you should, uh, you should you know, do your best to be at the prime place you can be when you're taking sales calls because leads do cost money. Uh, this is not the way to lead a sales team. And that's really what I want to highlight in this whole video is that if this is the kind of sales team you're on as a salesperson, get out of there as quick as you can. If you're a sales manager or business owner and this is how your sales manager is running the team, you need to, you need to quit this right away because this, again, this is going to create this sort of inconsistent sales, high turnover, high burnout, and the cost of training new salespeople and having them burn through leads as they learn is a heck of a lot more expensive than building an environment that's fun, that's collaborative, that's competitive, uh, that that's what makes a team thrive. I remember one of the most successful teams I was ever on. Uh, it was, you know, they called us the three horsemen. It was me and two other guys. And we you know, had doubled, tripled the sales for this business office, a very well-known uh, high ticket coach uh, in, the, in the coaching space. Uh, and 
you know, we, nobody had ever done what we had done. But what made us good is that we, we competed. Like we wanted to like, hey, I go, oh, I got one more. You know, I'm going to beat you this month. It was fun. But we also helped each other. We listened to each other's calls. We reviewed each other's calls. We coached each other. We role played together. You know, we worked as a team. And even if somebody beat us, you know, we felt good that we had a hand in that because we were helping each other. We were collaborating. And that's the kind of team that you want to develop. This idea that you are, you know, you are crap. You know, hit the bricks like this, this attitude. It's just, again, it's, it's how you burn salespeople out. And you can just see by the, the way that people in this video are responding. Um, this isn't a happy place to work. So let's keep going. The leaves are weak. The leaves are weak. Fucking leaves are weak. You are weak. I've been in this business 15 years. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. The fucking leads are weak. You are weak. I've been in this business 15 years. What's your name? Fuck you. That's my name. <laughs> you know why, mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get so here tonight. So I, I want to just mention here the leads are weak. I drove an $80,000 BMW. Right? That's uh, my name. That's, there's always this battle between sales and marketing, right? Sales like, oh, the, these leads are crap. And marketing's like, hey, the leads are great. There's always this battle. And again, this is a collaborative thing that we want to consider, right? We sh sales, part of sales role is to give feedback back to marketing so that they can improve. But if you aren't honing your sales process, if you don't have the right sales environment, if you don't have the right people on your sales team, then it's going to always seem like the leads are weak. We don't want to blame the leads. We want to do everything we can, right, to handle the leads properly, right, to hone our skills, to be the best version of ourselves we can be because the leads cost money. And if we're doing that and we're doing everything right, and the people that are showing up on the calls truly are weak, then yeah, we need to give that feedback back to marketing. But unless you're showing up at 100%, you know, just because a lead at the end says, oh, I can't afford it, doesn't mean they can't afford it. What it means is uh, more often than not is that they're not sold. They don't believe in your offer. They don't, they don't want to buy it. And more often than not, that's a sales problem, not a marketing problem. If they came on the, the appointment, the call, uh, you know, having really raise their hand that they want this, you know, having gone through some sort of qualification process and now they're showing up on the call and you really didn't handle the call right, then yeah, they're going to say, you know, I don't have enough money or I got to think about it or whatever that is. That's not because the leads are weak. More often than not, that's a sales problem. But if you're taking responsibility and you're leading your team right or you're a salesperson and you're handling the calls right, then you have the right to give that feedback back to marketing. But if you're not, if you're not honing your skill set, if you're not at the best you can be, then you know you really don't have any. Even if it is the leads, you don't have a real place, a foot to stand on to say that. So I, I just want to point that out here because you know one of the things he says is the leads are weak. And your name is your wanting. You can't play in the man's game. You can't close them. And your name is your wanting. You can't play in the man's game. You can't close them and go home and tell your wife your troubles. Because only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. You hear me, you fucking faggots? This is toxic leadership. That's what this really is. It's toxic leadership. There is a better way, okay? The way to lead a sales team is the same way to lead a sales call actually understand the, in the goals of the person that you're talking to. What's their why? What do they want? And so when you're leading a sales team, what you really want to understand is, yeah, it's great. You know, I, I was on a sales team meeting with a, a business owner recently, and he spent two hours just talking about the company's goals. Oh, we're going to hit a million dollars a month. This is what we're going to do to get there. Da, 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 da. Never once did he ask the team what their goals were. If you want to be successful, Ask the team, like, what are your goals? Why are you doing this? What do you hope to achieve? Why do you want to hit that revenue goal? You want to hit, you know, 30% close rate. You want to close 25 sales this month. You want to make $20,000 in, in commissions. Great. Why? Understand your sales team, right? Authentically connect with them and communicate with them, just like they should be doing on their sales calls. When you understand their why and you can help bridge the gap for them on how them getting what they want, right, is about getting the revenue goals that the company's trying to hit. When they can see those two things are congruent, that's when they're going to be successful. That's how you lead a team. 
this toxic leadership, this fear-based leadership, this you close or you're fired, get them to sign on the dotted line is your only goal, right? There's nothing about service here. There's nothing about getting the client results. There's nothing about caring for the salespeople, let alone the, the clients. This is toxic leadership. The only thing that matters is the close. Service matters, right? Sleeping well at night matters. And I can tell you that none of the salespeople on this team are gonna sleep well because they're not selling a product they believe in. They're not being led by somebody they believe in and they're being treated like total dirt, you know, total jerks. You know, it's, it's just, this is a toxic leadership and it, it doesn't work. And I've seen lots of sales teams that, that actually run this way. So let's keep going here. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. So let's talk about that. Always be closing. I hate that statement. Now, don't get me wrong. One of the things that it's really important for salespeople to know is that when they've got the person in the buyer's pocket, don't sell past the, the close. And I hate to even use that term, the buyer's pocket. It's such a common phrase that people use now. But when you've got somebody who's in that place, we're like, man, I want this. And then we sell past the close. We're nervous. We don't want to say the price. We just keep talking, right? That, that awkward, you know, that's no good, right? But so we do want to recognize when somebody is there and we do want to enroll them. We do want to now say, okay, great, right? You're excited, cool. Let me share with you what this looks like. Let's do it. You know, take the credit card, enroll them, button them down, get, get you know, enroll the client. That's great. But this idea of always be closing, again, it's get them to sign on the dotted line. Always be closing. Sometimes some people shouldn't be closed. Sometimes they're not a good fit. Sometimes it's just, it's not the right thing for them to do. And uh, you will close more sales when you come at it from that perspective, when you come at it from service. And so that's what I don't like about this philosophy of always be closing. It also comes from a place of scarcity. And when you're in a place of scarcity of, oh, I gotta close every sale, you know, like it doesn't matter if it's the best thing for the client or not. It doesn't matter if it's the best thing for the company or not. When you're in that kind of atmosphere, you're actually gonna find inconsistent close rate and you're gonna find that you actually make less money both for the company and as a salesperson in your own commission. So I'm not a fan of the, the always be closing uh, model. AIDA, attention, interest, decision, action. Attention, do I have your attention? Interest, are you interested? I know you are, cause it's fuck or walk. You close or you hit the bricks. Decision, have you made your decision for Christ? action. A-I-D-A. -A. Get out there. You got the prospects coming in. You think they came in to get out of the rain? A guy don't walk on the lot lest he wants to buy. They're sitting out there waiting to give you their money. Are you going to take it? Okay, so let's talk about this A-I-D-I -I, uh, for just a second. So the concept here is uh, actually pretty good. This is actually a concept here that I, I like, and I'm just trying to pull it back up so that I can actually show you here. Um, the first thing is attention, right? And this is actually for most of our clients, you are doing some sort of marketing uh, where you're grabbing their attention, right? There's an ad, there's something, right? They click on the ad, they register to watch a training. Now they're showing interest, right? They're, sh they're actually showing interest. Uh, they're actually willing to, you know, to fill out the um, you know, to fill out the, the application or whatever it is. Uh, uh, let me stop that here just a sec. So AIDI, -I, attention, interest, and then decision, right? Now this is what we actually do on the sales call. So the attention and the interest is actually in, for most of the people that we work with, the, the decision actually is made by the client on the call with the salesperson's help. And the way that we get them to make the decision on the call is by actually understanding where they're coming from. Okay. <laughs> we actually understand where they're coming from and, uh, and actually helping them to, to see how the solution that you're offering is going to help them get the result that they want. Uh, and so it's really, really, uh, I think a good model that you want to be on a sales team where there's a tension being gotten through the right marketing, right? They're, they're showing interest and you're talking to somebody who's interested and you're actually helping them to make the decision. And then what's the last one here? And then action. 
And action is getting them to actually, like first they've got to make the decision that, hey, this is the right thing for them. And you do that through the sales process, through uncovering what their why is, their doubts, their, their, about their ability to solve it, right? They're making that decision because you're walking them on the path where they can see how you're going to help them get the result. And then the final thing is to make the offer and get them to take action. So this is out of everything that this, that this in here, this is actually you know, a little gold nugget here. You can always find the good in the bad. The leadership is toxic. The way this sales team is run is bad. Uh, but part of sales is having the uh, attention, getting the interest, helping them make the decision that this is the right solution for them and then getting them to take action. That's probably the only good that I've seen in this sales speech so far. So let's keep going. Are you man enough to take it? Incredible. What's the problem, pal? You, Moss. You're such a hero. You're so rich. How come you're coming down here and waste your time with such a bunch of bums? You see this watch? See this watch? Yeah. That watch costs more than your car. I made nine hundred seventy thousand dollars last year. How much you make? You see, pal, that's who I am, and you're nothing. Nice guy? I don't give a shit. Good father? Fuck you. Go home and play with your kids. You want to work here? Close. You think this is abuse? You think this is abuse, you cocksucker? You can't take this. How can you take the abuse you get on a sit? You don't like it, leave. I can go out there tonight. The materials you got make myself $15,000. Tonight, in two hours, can you? Can you? Go and do likewise. A-I-D-A. -A. Get mad, you son of a bitches. Get mad. You know what it takes to sell real estate? It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Go and do likewise, gents. The money's out there. You pick it up, it's yours. You don't, I got no sympathy for you. You want to go out on those sits tonight and close Close, it's yours. Not, you're going to be shining my shoes. So look, I, the, the main point I want to make here is that this is toxic leadership. It just is, um, you know, there are standards, right? You should have standards. You should set clear expectations for your teams, right? And if somebody's not meeting those standards, uh, they're not closing at the rate that, you know, that, that uh, is potential, is possible, right? You've got a, a set standard. Great. Have those standards, you know? Kindly let the people who can't meet those standards go. Recruit the people that can. Build a collaborative team. But this kind of toxic leadership, this, this way of treating people, it doesn't do anything. It's an old school way of thinking uh, and it doesn't work. It, I don't know that it ever worked. It certainly doesn't work today. I've seen a lot of teams that have come to us that have, have had this style of leadership and are wanting to shift away from it because you've got a business owner who hires a sales manager who doesn't really know how to incentivize and motivate a team to succeed. And uh, they, they, recognize it, but oftentimes it works for a minute, right? In a competitive environment, salespeople are competitive. They dive in, they, they try to do well for a minute, but they burn out very quickly because this type of toxic leadership just doesn't work. And so that's a big part of what I really wanted uh, to highlight uh, for you today. And uh, look, are you ready to lead your team to go and make sales? Because it's very powerful when you do set standards, when you do have the right people, when you do have the right environment, when you set these things up right, when you don't do it this way, you're going to find that you absolutely can build a, a world-class sales team that can do really well, really well. And there's, you know, one last point that I want to make here as we go through this. So let's watch just one more minute here. And you know what you'll be saying? Bunch of losers sitting around in the bar. Oh yeah. I used to be a salesman. It's a tough racket. These are the new leads. These are the Glengarry leads. 
And to you, they're gold. And you don't get them. Why? Because to give them to you is just throwing them away. They're for closers. So the last thing I wanted to point I wanted to make here is, uh, look, uh, you know, giving the best leads to the best closers makes a lot of sense. I mean, especially leads cost money. So, you know, that's, you know, one other point here uh, that does make some sense. But one thing I want to say with that is how does somebody who isn't closing at the highest rate, how do they ever get out of that if you give them the worst leads, right? And so the, the key thing, and there's, there's a lead indicator and there's a lag indicator when it comes to building a sales team. The lead indicator is the close rate. The lag indicator is, are they actually performing? Are they, do they actually handle the sales call, the sales process properly? And so for me, uh, if I am listening to recordings and doing call reviews for a salesperson and they've got the right attitude and they're doing the administrative work uh, and their calls sound good, but they maybe haven't hit the, the best close rate, you know, I'm going to encourage the, you as a business owner to give them some of those good leads. You know, yeah, you, you know, you've got somebody on your team that absolutely is had the highest close rate and, you know, also has the, the, uh, the lead indicator and the, the lead indicator uh, is actually are they closing well? The lag indicator is the close rate because if they're closing well, then we will see their close rate go up. So we want to pay attention to that lead indicator. So if you're if you've got a sales team and they're not, uh, uh, and you've got the the best closer who's got that that lag indicator, that high closing rate, then they should get the best leads. But you don't want to not give good leads to your uh, your other salespeople because you never give them a chance uh, to to improve, and they they'll just burn out and they'll go away. And you might lose somebody who's lead indicator, right? That they're actually performing well, that they're actually handling the call right, but their close rate just hasn't caught up yet. You might actually uh, end up really burning that person out and losing somebody who could potentially be very good on your team. So yes, you do want to pay attention and you want to shuffle the leads and you want to make sure that the most qualified people are going to, have the, uh, the, going to get the first dib at the best leads because leads cost money. Uh, and so that's one other thing here to take away, but there's a way to do it. And it's not just to keep all the good leads away. It's just, you always want to make sure you feed your best guy. You want to make sure they've got good leads, but you also want to spread that out a little bit and give others a chance to raise up because that's how you build a team uh, with multiple successful salespeople. And wouldn't it be great if everybody on your team is closing at a consistent rate and everybody is getting the best leads and they're all making a, a great living and the, the, the company revenue is doing well, you can reinvest that in getting even more leads, more good, better qualified leads. That can all happen, uh, but it, it's all in how you run the team. It's all in leadership. The most important thing that's going to make your sales team successful, it's how you lead your team. This is a great example of how not to lead your team. And there was two, two gold nuggets I pulled out of there, the A-I-D-A, -A, and then also uh, the you know spreading the leads, leads around. But you gotta do those things the right way, and that's what is going to, to make a successful sales team. Leadership is key. So if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button so that I know that you liked it and I can create more content like this. Comment below with any thoughts or comments or feelings that you've got about this content. Of course, if you want more content like this consistently, hit the subscribe button so you get notified by the little notification bell in the corner. And if you wanna connect with us and get more personalized support in our free community, join our Facebook group by clicking the link in the description box below this video.